Okay. Hello. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be painting these green apples that hopefully you can see on your screen. I will show you what colors I'm using first. This is CAD Yellow Light, CAD Lemon, Rembrandt Brand, Transparent Orange, CAD Red Light, Permanent Red Medium, Permanent Rose. This is a Windsor Newton color. These are Rembrandt colors. This is uh, made by Gamblin, transparent orange. It's a wonderful, dark, transparent, warm. This is permanent alizarin crimson, also made by Gamblin. This is ultramarine blue, made by Rembrandt. Uh, take that back. That is made by Windsor Newton. But both of those brands are about the same. My white is over here and you can't see it. So I'm going to move it where you can see it. This is titanium white made by M. Graham Company. I really love this white. It's very creamy and has a walnut oil in it. That's the binder. Uh, walnut oil sets up a little slower, so gives you a little more working time. Okay. My first step is making a <clears throat> gray. I'm going to use a palette knife. I like to sketch with gray as if you've seen a video of mine in the past, you, you will know that. I start by, I, I can, I, I just make a gray with, by using my three primaries. This time I'm going to start with ultramarine blue, alizarin, let's add a little white to see what we have. Makes a wonderful, um, violet. So my complement to violet is yellow. So I could use transparent orange or any of these yellows to add to this to make a nice gray. Let's get it all mixed together. Now that's a little red. That gray is a little red. I'm going to add just a touch of blue back into it. And if it gets too cool, which it is, I'm going to add a little more yellow into it. Sometimes this takes a minute. I originally got too much um, alizarin in it, I think. Alizarin, just a little bit, goes a long way. So you generally just need a little bit of it. But that's that's pretty good there. Let me add a little more white to it to see more what we've got. Now this is a great color to sketch with. I'm cleaning my brush. I always have a piece of uh, paper towel in my left hand to wipe my brush with to keep my colors clean. Really important. I'm going to use this sable round. This is made by Ruby Satin. It's a ruby satin or, or a silver ruby satin. Size two round. The round refers to the shape of the, the sable br bristles. And sable means that it's made out of, uh, this is synthetic sable, but they used to in many years past make out of real sable hair, but this is synthetic, but they're soft. 
their softer brushes. Use a little bit of mineral spirits to thin this down a little bit. Brushes are made long for oil painting so that you will, it, it forces you to um, step back and use the length of the brush so that you can see what you, you're doing. It's really not good to get right up on your subject or your, uh, I mean, your canvas. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sketch out the planes of these apples. And these apples have a lot of just straight edge sides. That one in front, there's one that's slightly in front of the other, is sitting a little bit on its side and it has a cast shadow underneath it that comes out here and here. Okay, now I'm going to sketch on the other apple, also using straight lines because it's my thinking that if you really observe objects, there's nothing in nature that is perfectly round. So I use, it looks much more organic this way. And that's what I want to convey to my viewer. Now, this may not be exactly right. However, um, I can correct my drawing with what is behind it. So with my background and foreground, I can correct any drawing errors that I've made. Okay. Now the, here's a, the cast shadow. The cast shadows are very important as well because they describe the objects. My light source is from this uh, upper, upper left like this and hitting this apple right here, hitting this one right here. There's a highlight on both of those right there. What I like to do is teach people to see rather than just drawing in lines and filling in the, the middle. I'd like for you to see planes and abstract shapes of color, light, and shadow. This, the darkest part of this two apples set up here, if I squint down is where these, these apples touch right here. These, what I'm drawing now are just shapes of shadow that hopefully you can see. Um, I probably need to move my, this a little bit because It doesn't give you the exact view that I'm seeing. So let me, this is a little bit more accurate. There, okay, that's better. Okay, so you can see that there is a shadow plane all in here, and there's a darker shadow plane inside where the stem is. There's also a big shadow plane on the side of this apple, comes down here, 
and inside where the stem is as well. And that small ellipse in there. Okay, so what my job as a painter is to paint what I see. I try to match the color, the shapes that I see, try to put them on as closely as I can. And I have to try to match the value that I see. Now, I think I've gotten this apple a little big there. So I have to try to match the values that I see. Value refers to the lightness and darkness of shapes in your subject, okay? Um, if you do not get the color exactly right, it's better to create the value relationships that you see in your subject. Most of us can match the color to a great degree, but I see a lot of artists that lose their value shapes. And when you lose your value shapes, when you lose that relationship, light to dark, dark to light, what you have is, well, to put it bluntly, kind of a blah plant painting. You don't have um, something that sings, something that looks like your subject that you're seeing. So learning to see and paint value is so very important. Now I'm going to quit talking for a minute and put in my shapes of color and value just as I observe them. I'll put in my shadow planes first. This is a little cool. I'm gonna warm it up just a touch by adding some transparent orange to that. Hopefully you can see how that warmed that tone a little. I'm gonna carry this on up into this cast shadow underneath this apple. Correcting some drawing if I need to on the way. I've got some yellow in there. Okay. Now, if you're looking at the subject with your eyes open, you might say, oh, well, that's too dark. But it's really not. If you squint down, you'll see that that shadow is a lot darker than what it might appear when you look at it with your eyes open. So now I'm going to make a green by using the ultramarine blue and I'm going to start with CAD uh, yellow light. Maybe add a little lemon to it. I want to get that darkest green here. I think that's probably not dark enough. If I squint down this, this green right here is pretty dark. Now the reason I like that transparent orange is because it's very warm and it's very transparent. So it makes the darkest warm green. And I think uh, what I had on there was a little too cool. And we'll talk more about cool colors and warm colors. But basically, it's easy to think about, but not necessarily easy to see or paint. So 
But if you compare these two together, you can tell this has more blue in it. I had to keep adding blue into that mixture to darken it. But if I use the transparent orange in blue, the transparent orange is very dark and it warms up that blue. I hope you can see that. And so I want the warmest, uh, a little bit warmer than what I had over here, right there. And I'm gonna put that in there. So I'm just painting these um, value color shapes. That's all I'm doing. Not necessarily rocket science. I see a dark there where the apple is sitting on the table and also right here where this this apple is causing a cast shadow on this other one. Okay. Clean my brush again. Now I'm gonna come up just a little bit in value here, but that is still shadow plank. Well, let me back up. I missed this dark shape over here. So let's get that in. Squinting to see my shapes. Okay, now. I want to bring that up in value just a little for the rest of my shadow. Uh, there's some bounce light from the tabletop coming up into the bottom of these apples. And so I'm just gonna paint those a little bit lighter, but it's still in the shadow plane. So I can't get too light. Send that down with some mineral spirit so I can Get it on. If your paint gets a little tacky, not wanting to go on as well. Okay. Here as well. This type of painting is called a la prima. You're getting all of it in and painting all of your shapes and the whole getting the whole painting done in one sitting that's called all a prima painting okay now is the uh, fun part you see a little bit of this right back here in this ellipse and around in this one as well. And why is that? It's because as the stem goes in, it gets darker. And as it comes out, that plane here, this plane catches just a tad bit more light. Okay, I'm gonna change brushes and use my bristle because this is my Robert Simmons bristle brush because sometimes those uh, sable and sable light brushes will pick up the paint. It's easier to lay it on with this. Okay, now let's, Make that yummy green on the side of the apple. And I'm making it right here close to this one because 
lot lighter than the shadow. Trying to be mindful of my drawing here. Okay. Everything will go in in very abstract looking shapes. Okay. My old teacher, Lindy, used to say everything has an ugly stage. So the light's coming from this direction, hitting here and hitting, going through, hitting on this apple. You have to kind of think about how light travels. Oops, sorry. Okay, so in my brush, I'm gonna put in my background and foreground. When I squint down, my background to me uh, is a warmer, a little warmer gray tone. very quickly scrub that in with my bristle brush. Actually the the perpendicular plane back there, the background, that backdrop uh, from where I'm sitting, I'm sitting up a little bit from your view still isn't exactly what mine is. Uh, your view is looking over the tops of the apples. I'm looking more down on them. So, okay, I'm going to put in the foreground. And the foreground looks to me to have a little bit of blue in it. It's cooler. And I'm going to carve out some of this apple because I think I got it a little big. Carve out my shadow plane. I'm using lots of paint with this. And there is a slight light coming through right here, kind of in the shape of a small triangle right there. Those little negative shapes like that are pretty important. They just, all of these shapes describe each other. Important to um, describe the whole. Okay. So now that we have all these mosaic forms on here. What do we do now? I'll show you. Trying to match the shape that I see up there, those organic apples. And they really are organic. No joke. I'm just going to kind of soften where the background hits there. Going to soften where that. Um, 
actually the light comes on around like this. It is so windy outside. I don't know if you can hear that. Okay, I'm going to clean my brushes really well. Now, my apples look a lot greener than what I see on the webcam. So when I post this, I will send a photo and of the actual painting and the apples. This is one reason why I like using my camera to do this because it the, the colors are tr more true. I'm wondering if I turn off the light if this will help at all, or will it just make it where you can't see? No, it doesn't help. That um, webcam is has moved as well. Okay. So now I want to soften some edges and pull these up to speed. Soften some edges. Oh, shadow. There's a shadow um, underneath this. Both of these apples. And if I leave it out, those apples will look like they're floating on the table. So I don't wanna do that. And I wanna soften them into the other part of the cast shadows. Okay. Let's just soften some of this together now and bring this all together. I'm going to put a third value shape in here now. What I don't want to do is bring all of this into this because I'll lose this, this part. But I can soften the edge and pull those together just a hair. Squinting down, I want to leave my darkest dark here. Now let's soften this edge as that ellipse moves away from me. It is soft. Now this one is softer too. However, 
not quite as much. Correcting my drawing. Soften that just a hair. I'm gonna go back, add a little more blue, a little more cad lemon in that. There's a, a third color in here. But these are details you don't do at first. You wait, you get your big shape in first. And there's a little bit of that color right here. All that gives it depth. Let's soften this edge a little more. And here with a light touch. And I'm going to put in a nice highlight. Now you really can't see this. This is this is why I like to use my camera. The colors are so much better than what it shows in the on the screen. I hate that. I'm not sure why it picks up the colors in the apples on the table. I wonder if I switch my webcams, if that would help. I'm going to pause my recording and try that. And figure out how to do it. Stop video. Pause recording. Okay, I think I've figured this out. So now you can see a little bit better how my apples really look the colors better. It's uh, last year I bought a fancy dancy webcam thinking the color would be better. Well, that is the one that is showing the still life setup and the cheaper one actually shows the better color. So go figure. Sometimes more expensive isn't necessarily better, I guess. So, okay, I'm gonna continue on with this. Now I want to soften this stuff just a little more. Pull some of this together very carefully though. And I'm using a, a bristle brush I'm using a light touch. Whoops. And just modeling some of these edges together, being very careful not, not to destroy my shadow plane shapes. Go back to my, this, there's a cooler green right there. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking it okay. I'll bring the bottom down just a hair. It's like it's gonna fall over. Don't want it to fall over. 
even though it is shaped like that, looks like to me. Every time I take a brush stroke, I wipe my brush off on my paper towel. Big, very important. I need to let my cat in. It's so windy and cold outside. Come on. I know it's miserable out there. Got my cat, my dog in here. They keep me company in the studio. And want treats. So I just keep gently working with this stuff until I get it the way I want it. Till I have all the shapes matching. And I'm happy with that. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, work on this guy. So soften some edges. This is so much fun. I love doing this. Seeing if you can, it's a challenge. Every painting is a challenge. And some don't work out and that, I have to be okay with that. Now, I think this could be a little, that. It's got some cooler tones right here. So I'm going to stick those back in. Keeping my value though. I think I got a little too warm. You know, the problem with letting your cat in is they want right back out. Sorry, Boots, you're gonna have to wait. I'm busy. I'm busy, buddy. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but he's making a miserable cry. He hates the wind, but then he wants in, he wants in, then he wants out, then he wants in again. Okay, I'm just softening edges. Now I'm gonna put my center, dark, dark, close shadow back in there. Put in that darker. Sometimes it's hard to judge the the temperature of a color. Okay. I saw that that was, and this is a little cooler over here, a little lighter and cooler. I'll just keep working at it. Okay, there is a cooler tone as this comes around here, right on this edge. Okay. That's looking fairly close. I think this is a bit dark. 
so very carefully. That's too light. Very carefully, I'm gonna warm it up. I mean, cool it off, excuse me. Too dark and too cool, too warm. That's better. Now, very gently, I'm squinting down. This is this reflected light over here is a little bit lighter. Soften that edge. I think I misjudged my drawing a little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to go in, back in and restate some of my, this light plane here. And then a little highlight. Okay, boots, back out you go, go on. You'd rather be cold, I guess. Oops, that's a problem with getting up. I kick all my gear out of the way. Okay. I'm happy with this. It's not perfect, but I think it represents those apples fairly well. I think I need to pull a dark out of that center part here very gently. There. Okay. <clears throat> Stems. They're warmer. They're brown. So how do I make a brown? Oh, uh, more warmth, just a touch of that blue to darken it. There we go. And this guy, dark first, it's got a little warm light shape right on the on the top of it where it's catching the light is is just catching it. And like that. Okay. I'm gonna clean up back here a little bit. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm a lot more wide on my palette. Doesn't really need that background. So I'm gonna take it out. I mean the backdrop. I'm talking about that vertical plane back there. Not the horizontal one, of course. Not this one, but this one back here.
don't really need all of that. Or probably your viewer would say, what is that anyway? Okay. I'm pretty well done. You know, squint and compare, look at what I've got. I think I could bring my highlight down just a hair and maybe soften it a bit. I'm very happy with this, this apple here. <clears throat> the only thing that I think I could improve on is that little shape back in there. And also back in here. Sometimes those little dark accents like that will help your painting to, to pop out more. Dark shadow. Okay, I'm done, I think. I may do some more later, but ooh, when I look at my painting in the, uh, over in the, um, on the computer, I see this, hit, I've got this hit edge real hard and it's not that hard. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. Whoever's watching it. I hope you learned something that you can use in your own painting. Bye-bye.